بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم dear respected elders and friends ulama ikram mothers and sisters listening over the home receivers and radio islam international's youtube channel allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the quran a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim in tansurullaha yansurukum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum this is just one portion of an ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. A quick background of this ayat. At this time, Sahaba were surrounded with, with enemies. Islam was on the rise and naturally there were a lot of enemies. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayat in the form of a remedy. Intansurullaha yansurkum. That remember if you seek help against your enemies and against your problems, Tansurullah, help the deen of Allah. Help the deen of Allah and Allah's assistance will come. The principle behind this verse, dear respected elders and friends, is we need to make an effort to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way possible. Let the writers write, let the speakers speak, let the teachers teach, whatever it is we do, sometimes should be taken out to assist the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The problems that we have in life, whether it be our personal problems or community problems, global problems, this ayah tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance will come if individually we take our time to assist the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On this point of assistance, we take this opportunity as well on behalf of Radio Islam to thank the community of Roshni, alhamdulillah, for their great support to the station over the years. Last year, 2017, marked the station's 20th year of broadcasting. And alhamdulillah, this of course was not possible without the support of the loyal listeners ever since 1993, when that first idea of an Islamic radio station came into one man's, one man's mind. And alhamdulillah, whenever our station manager speaks about the assistance, etc., Always, Roshni is one of the localities, especially when it comes to, you know, the loyal listenership, the word of support and things like that. We take this opportunity to thank you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our efforts for his deen. Amin. Alhamdulillah, tonight in Roshni, we do have our guest from Australia, Muhammad Hublus, and we ask uh, Muhammad to come and share with us a few words. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If I can kindly ask the brothers to move forward, inshallah. There's no need to be so far. And the brothers in the back, inshallah, can come in. Please. If I can kindly ask you all to move forward. If I may humbly ask, inshallah, before we start the program, especially for the brothers in the front, please, wallahi, it really distracts me when there's brothers that move around and people come to pour water for me or anything. Please, wallahi, if I can just kindly ask, turn your phones off, put it on silent, do whatever you have, any movement you need to make, please make it now, inshallah, because I really get distracted. What happens is a brother will come to move something and all the brothers, their attention goes to this. So please, inshallah, whatever movement needs to be made, inshallah, please make it now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. I'd like to thank the community of Rushni Sharif 
أستاذوسني شريفة <تصفيق> الله ما الله سبحانه وتعالى bless this community my hosts have been amazing their khidma has been amazing they've opened their homes and their families and I can honestly say wallahi I cannot do in return what you have done for me wallahi I cannot so I can only ask Allah that he blesses you all and your families and your community and the progeny of these people into the day of judgment Bismillah wa alhamdulillah Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the king, the master, the sustainer the creator of the heavens and the earth and we send peace and blessings upon his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam My brothers, it is very important that from the onset of this bayan insha'Allah that what is the condition of the heart and what is your intention for being here? If your intention is simply you want to be here because there's an event and you don't want to be the one that missed out so tomorrow morning at the local cafes when everyone is speaking about what happened last night, you don't want to feel like I was the one who missed out, then wallahi my brothers we should all renew our intention. Because whenever we come to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we come with an open heart. We do not come here, my brothers, for entertainment purposes. Unfortunately, deen is taking that path. It's a fine line between using social media and current available networks for using it for da'wah and entertainment. It's a fine line. But unfortunately, somewhere along the road, it gets mixed up. Deen is not the entertainment industry, my brothers. We don't come to the houses of Allah to see speakers. We do not praise individuals, we only praise Allah. So we come, my brothers, sincerely with an open heart that we're here for change, and not just any change, but rather we're here for permanent change. So please, my brothers, we need to renew our intentions. And as you sit and as you listen, you should have this, you know, it should be within the akhlaq and the adab of anyone that is seeking knowledge, anyone that wants to get closer to Allah, that whenever you come, don't even, really you should tune out of anything and everything except what is being said, you and Allah. That this message is for me. That any sicknesses that are mentioned are sicknesses that are within me. Don't think about your friend and your brother who's not here, who should have been here because, you know, subhanAllah, the sheikh spoke about all of the man's problems. No. We are the ones that are most sick. We are the ones that are most in need. So please, my brothers, this is, this is how we should be listening. And we listen with an open heart, inshallah. My brothers, there is a very famous story that, again, I don't want you to listen to the entertainment of it. While, yes, it's an entertaining story. But rather for the lesson, the underlying message that is within. It is said that in the time of Isa alayhi salam, our beloved Prophet, Isa was traveling with some of his companions one day. And again, as you listen to the story, you envision yourself. You know, personally, I have this habit whenever I hear a hadith of Rasulullah. I don't, wallahi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I always imagine there, I, well, the weirdest things go through my mind. I wonder what was his face like? What expression was on his face? How did the Sahaba receive the message? Imagine, this is how we benefit. So Isa alayhi salam, he was traveling one day with some of his companions. And, and along their travel, they got hungry. So he, alayhi salam, he collects whatever money they had amongst themselves. It wasn't much. So he appointed one of the people in the group, one of his companions. He says, look, so that we all don't go to the town and go to the shopping center and waste our time there. You take this money, go to town and buy whatever you can, food with it, come back so we can all eat. So the man does as he's told. He takes the money, he goes into town. 
when he gets into town, he realizes that the money he had, all he could buy with it was three loaves of bread. That's all he could buy. So he buys the three loaves of bread. Then as he's returning to Isa alayhi salam, Sheikh Shaitan. You know Sheikh Shaitan? Sheikh Shaitan is our real Sheikh. Because really what he says, we do. So Sheikh Shaitan came to him like a big Maulana and said to him, Sheikh, you're a grown man. And there must be at least six, seven men back there, including a prophet. And all you have is three loaves of bread. If you get back there with the three loaves of bread, by the time it's distributed amongst the men that are there, what is left for you? So the man thinks to himself, so Sheikh Shushu says to him, you eat one, eat one, and go back with the two. So the man now, he's thinking, you know, there's three loaves of bread. There's a few men back there. So he eats one of the loaves and he returns back with the two loaves of bread. When he gets to Isa alayhi salam, he gives him the two loaves of bread. Isa alayhi salam, he says to him, he says, I ask you by Allah, where did the third loaf of bread go? The man here, is gone for a six. He's thinking, man, I ate the loaf in private, in secret. There was no one there. And this is every one of us when we get cornered. He did what every one of us does when we get cornered. He was so shy, he was so embarrassed, such an awkward position, the man says to him, Wallahi, I only bought two. And we look at, the, you know, many of us, we think of the story, we think, ah, he shouldn't have done it. Yet, really, how many times have you and I lied? How many times have you and I lied for something far less? We lie to our spouses, we lie to our parents, we lie to our employers, we lie to our customers. Worse than all, we lie to ourselves and we believe our lies. So Isa alayhi salam, look at the qualities of a prophet. He says, you know what? I'm not going to get involved in an argument here. He says, by Allah, there was only two. He says, fine. So they continued on their journey. As they carried on, some time had passed and they got hungry. So the men, they were successful in hunting an animal. They hunted an animal, they killed it, they slaughtered it, they cooked, and then they ate it. And they ate so much that nothing was left except the carcass. So Isa alayhi salam, he calls the man that bought the bread to begin with. He says, my friend, come sit here. He sits him next to him, and by the mu'jiza of Allah, by the qudra of Allah, Isa gives life to the animal in front of his very eyes. The animal they just ate, he brings it back to life and it runs off in front of them. He says to the man, I ask you by Allah, by the one who gave life to this animal, who ate that third loaf of bread? You know, many of us, my brothers, sometimes... You begin something with a lie. Then Allah gives you an opportunity to redeem yourself and fix it. But the man here, such an awkward position, he says to him, by Allah there was only ever two to begin with. 
So they continued on their journey. Eventually they get to a river that was flooded. And they needed to cross the river. So Isa alayhi salam, he calls upon his companions, he says to them together to hold hands, and then by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the qudra of Allah, Allah allowed Isa and his companions to walk on the surface of the water until they crossed the river. Imagine these miracles. Imagine these mu'jizat that are happening in front of your eyes. So the men, you know, sometimes things happen to you. Not miracles, just things that make you feel lucky. You want the world to see you, you know. <laughs> Imagine the men, they're walking on the water, on the surface of the water. Until they get to the other side, excitement and they're buzzing and Allahu Akbar, look at this miracle. Then Isa alayhi salam, he gets the man that bought the bread. He says to him, I ask you, by the one that allowed us to walk on the water, who ate that third loaf of bread? The man says, by Allah, there was only ever two. There is, this man exists in all of us, my brothers. So some time passed, they continued on their journey until eventually Isa alayhi salam, he gets to a particular place. He sat down, he collected some dirt, some sand, soil, and he made three piles, three piles. Then he calls the man over. He says to him, my friend, you sit here. So the man sat. So as he sat, as he sat, Isa alayhi salam in front of his very eyes, he turns the three piles of dirt into gold. So he says to his companion, he says to him, listen, one pile is for you, one pile is for me, and one pile is for the one that ate that third loaf of bread. So the man says, Kasme, I'm the one that ate that third loaf of bread. He says, by Allah, it was me that ate that third loaf of bread. This is our reality, my brothers. Really, when push comes to shove and we really have to choose, money always comes before Allah. Now, of course, we've all been trained. No, astaghfirullah, Shaykh. Voodoo magic, a'udhu billah, Shaykh. Not me. We've become professional liars, my brothers. We love this world. We love money. And anyone who says to me, no, Allah says in the Quran, وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا Allah says, no, 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 not you like money. You have this evil, this possessive love for wealth. Who said? Allah! So the man says, by Allah it was me. So Isa alayhi salam, he says, for you my friend is the three piles but you can no longer join me on my journey. The man's thinking what? Habibi, who needs you and your journey? I have enough here to live the rest of my days. So Isa and his companions continue. The man is sitting down, admiring his newfound fortune. A dream that we all have. Ask any Muslim that's honest enough and tell him truly, my brother, what is your biggest wish? We love it. So the man is sitting, he's admiring his new wealth. 
Then three thieves, as they were traveling, they seen the man alone and three piles of gold. The first thing they did was they killed him. Look how short-lived his wealth was. So the three men sat, there's three piles of gold and three of us, you don't need a scientist to work out the division. But they too were hungry. So they said, look, let one of us take some money, go to the town, buy us some food, come back, we will have our last supper together, then each man take his pile and we will go our three separate ways. So one of them goes into the town, he takes the money, he goes into the town and he buys them food. But all along, what was he thinking about? And the whole time he was doing what he had to do, what were the other two that were waiting? What were they thinking about? So the man says, the one that was buying the food, He says, you know what? That pile of gold is not enough for me. I need the lot. So he buys the food and he poisons it. He buys the food and he poisons it. Then he comes, so he's planning and plotting like we plan and plot every day of our lives. How can I attain more wealth? We've been... Shukr, Sheikh, shukr, alhamdulillah, shukr, 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 alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. But every ounce of our body. Money makes me smile. And money or lack thereof makes me cry. While he was planning and plotting, they too were planning and plotting. They said, look, if we kill the man when he returns, we will divide his pile in half. We will divide his pile in half and we've increased our wealth. So when the man came back, before he could say a word, they killed him. Then they sat down to enjoy their last meal, not knowing that also it was poisoned. And shortly after, they also died. Then some time passed when Isa alayhi salam and his companions were returning. And as they returned, they seen their, their former companion with the three thieves laying on the floor dead and the three piles of gold as he left it. So Isa alayhi salam, he turns to his companions and he says to them, this is the love of dunya and this is what it will do to anyone who seeks it. Dunya has crippled us, my brothers. The love of this world has crippled us. The love of money has crippled this ummah. Allah did not create us to gather money, my brothers. Money from the onset, because as I traveled in Rushni, I could see there's some very wealthy people here, mashallah. Money itself is not evil. But the pursuit for money is what is destroying us. My brothers, Allah says that He created. Allah says we did not create. Allah says, Wama Allah says we did not create the jinn nor the human being. Illa except liyabudun. Allah says I created you to worship me and me alone. Allah says we do not ask you for your wealth. We do not ask you to feed us. Rather, we are the ones that sustain. We are the ones that give. 
Your purpose on this earth, my brother, is to worship Allah, not to gather and collect money. Your money and my money has already been predestined by Allah, not the day you were born, not the day you were born, but 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth, Allah already decreed every single rand you will ever earn in your life. Wallahi, death will not come to you until the last ounce of rizq that Allah has ordered for you comes. Real life story, there was a brother who was in a coma. There was a brother that was in a coma. And the, the, the doctors were saying for weeks to the family, the man is dead. Let us turn off the machines. It's only the machines keeping him alive. Back and forward, back and forward. The man was for weeks. Until to the surprise, wallahi, and mu'ajiz are from Allah. To the surprise of everyone, the man woke up. Not just woke up, but woke up and within a very short time was able to speak. The doctors were amazed. His first request, he said, please, I want a cup of milk. Not my wife, not my children, not I need water. Some ajib reason, he asked for milk. So the family were that surprised to just see him move. They rushed, they grabbed him the cup of milk. He took one sip and died moments later. The, the ulama were saying that that sip of milk, Allah kept him alive in the coma for those weeks because that sip of milk was his rizq that Allah wrote for him 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. And Malik al mawt had no permission to take his life and Till he took his last ounce of rizq. And we are killing ourselves in this world. We have neglected the deen of Allah, the order of Allah, in pursuit of what? Money. Money, my brothers, money. Money is what drives us. Money is what brings us hope. Dunya, dunya, the love of this world, the love of this dunya. And what a contrast, what a contradiction from the man whom we claim we love, the man whom we claim is our idol, the man whom we claim is our leader. What a crying shame if he was to see the state of Muslims that we're in now. Our love for money has become so severe. Our quest for dunya has become so severe that even, wallahi, I sit with mashaykh. Mashaykh, I sit with mashaykh. And they have come to believe that the lack of success in this ummah is due to the lack of funds. Barakah, no one cares about. Nusra from Allah, no one cares about. Sunnah of the Habib, no one cares about. If money comes, we can grow, we can prosper. Never was money in the equation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Never. You see, my brothers, look, I know today's topic may not sit well with some. But don't hate me. I'm only giving you the evidence. Maybe I've misunderstood. Maybe I've misunderstood. But when your Habib, when your teacher, when the one whom Allah sent down as a guide to all of humanity says, Al-dunya mal'oona wa mal'oonun ma fiha. This world is cursed. And everything in it is cursed. I ask you by Allah, where does that sit in your everyday life? Where does that sit in your everyday life? Why have we forgotten the reality of this world? 
This world, my brothers, is temporary. This world is short. This world is transit. When the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sleeping on the floor, sleeping on a straw mat, a straw mat. And then one of the companions, he comes in, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wakes up from his sleep, and as he got up from his sleep, the marks of the, the, marks of the straw were on his back. Today we sleep in three, four, five, sometimes ten thousand dollar beds. Sheikh, I have a bad back, you know. <laughs> Allah's kareem, you know. Where's your tahajjud? Sheikh, it's hard to wake up for tahajjud. Habibi, you eat more food at supper than the Prophet ate in three years of his life. Then you go to sleep, 12, 1, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is no good after Isha, there is no good in your speeches, there is no good in your gatherings, except if it's the remembrance of Allah. His sunnah was to pray Isha, then go home to sleep, because there was hours of the night where we have to stand up, and make real shukr, not this rubbish on our tongues. The real shukr when you stand in front of Allah. But we eat until food comes out of our nostrils and our ears. You know, I've eaten more in South Africa. Wallahi, the ikram I've seen in this country, never before. Wallahi, you people are blessed. And your ikram, I will stand in front of Allah and say, no one gave me ikram like these people did. Wallahi, ajib. In fact, we were just at the, we just had, what I was just at now, I didn't have for my own wedding. <laughs> we stay up, we eat, we stay up, then I go to sleep on a $10,000 bed. Habibi, what hope in hell do you have of, never mind the hajjud, I'm even surprised you wake up for fajr. So he wakes up sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and the sahabi sees marks. Marks, marks. You know what the worst thing is, my brothers? When we hear about the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what a shame, what a shame that we think and we believe that the life that he lived was coincidence, not choice. The biggest musibah of this ummah, the biggest musibah is when we read about his life and we read his sunnah and we read the lives of the companions. How, how dare we? We think and we assume that the only reason they lived that life is because Allah withheld from them but gave us. This is your deen. This is your deen. That how dare you think that Allah the Malik, Allah the Kareem, Allah the one that gave Pharaoh, Pharaoh the man that said, I am God on earth. The Jabbar, Allah gave Pharaoh a kingdom the which the likes of no one has seen. But Allah withheld from his Habib? Allah the Malik, the one that's giving kuffar, the one that's giving the enemies of Allah, the one that he's giving them in abundance. Allah gives kuffar, but withholds from Rasulullah? But to make myself feel good, to make myself, to justify, to justify the extreme life that I'm living with my wealth, we downplay Rasulullah. 
Understand, my brothers, wallahi, for your sake. Today, it's become so potent. I hear even from the elder. No, my brother, you know, we need to find a common ground and we need to understand and we need to look at everything in moderation. Habibi, what are you talking about? Look at his life. Look at his choice of food. Look at his choice of clothing. That was his choice. لا ينطق عن الهوى رسول الله doesn't do anything except by Allah's permission when Jibreel عليه السلام came down to رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and he says to him يا رسول الله look at the choice the option that Allah the Malik gave him يا رسول الله what do you prefer do you wish to be a king or do you wish to be a slave A choice we would love to have. Guess what he chose? Come on, talk! Talk! But the truth is, him and his life is not good enough for me. Please, please, if there's anything I hate is movies, Disney movies amongst it. No, brother, astaghfir. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. Him and his life is nothing but baraka in the history books of Islam. Worse, uqsam billah, if we were to speak our hearts, his life and his choice is actually a shame for me in this day and age. That's the truth. He's a prophet, man. He's Rasulullah. He is the measuring stick Allah sent. Anything more than him is extreme. And anything less than him is extreme. Regardless how you feel, how the old Sati feels, how my mother and my father feel, how my wife and my children feel, how the rest of humanity feels, how CNN feels, how the world feels, he was the measuring stick Allah wanted. That until your life becomes like his life, until your dress becomes like his dress, until your manners become like his manners, until your food becomes like his food, until your fikr becomes like his fikr, you will never see success. Not he and not there. Not he, and not there. Allah says in the Quran, who better this, you know, let's say for instance, I don't, trust me, I don't, but let's say for instance, I own a Mercedes Benz. Who knows my car better than Mercedes Benz? Surely, Take it to the manufacturer. They know if I have a fault in my car, do you go to your local mechanic? Or do you go straight to the top? No, you go straight to the top. Tell me something. Who knows this dunya better than the one that created it? See, we've been pro... Allah... But every limb, every action says, I know better. <laughs> Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا That what is the life of this world? وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ The most common translation for this is what is the life of this world except 
it is a deception. It's a lie. It's a mirage. It's a Disney movie. The other translation that you never hear the ulama say, actually Ibn Kathir mentions this in his tafsir, that mata'ul ghurur is actually, mata'a is actually a rag. You know, an old rag. A rag that has no value. And the women of the past, when they used to get their monthly cycles, they didn't have what we have, you know, these disposable. So they had to keep a rag that had no value. And its only job was for that. So she would use that rag until her monthly cycle is finished. Then that rag has what? Zero value. So you dispose of this rag, you never use it again. Allah says, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ You can paint whatever picture you want, my brother. You're giving your whole life for that rag. That's this world. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the Sahih Hadith, he says, لو كانت الدنيا, لو كانت, لو, 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 what's, if, if, Rasulullah is saying, if, if, like, you know, sometimes, it's really not, but khalas, I'm forced, you know, look, it's not, but there's no other example. He says, لو كانت الدنيا, if this, لو كانت الدنيا, تعدل عند الله جناح بعوضة that if this world it doesn't but if this world and all of its glitter and all of its glamour if it doesn't but if it equaled in the eyes of Allah the wing of a mosquito ah Muslims Muslims where are we now Not the two wings of a mosquito. <laughs> maybe if I gave you two wings, maybe you could decorate something with it. The wing of a mosquito. ما سقى كافرا منها شربة ماء. That Allah would not have had given a single kafir a sip of water to drink. But it has no value in Allah's eyes. That's why he gives them wealth. He gives them palaces. He gives them fame. He gives them empires. He gives them women. He gives them all that their heart desires. While you and I, the followers of the Habib, we look at their lives and we drool. That Ya Allah, why didn't you bless me like you blessed them? Why didn't you bless me, Ya Allah, like you blessed them? What a shame, my brothers. Ali bin Abi Talib, he said, people are asleep. We're dreaming, my brothers. This life is a dream. We're dreaming. He says, and when they die, they wake up. But guess what? Too late. I ask you, my brother, sincerely, please, please, don't look around. Baynak wa baynullah, between you and Allah, where have you invested your whole life? I see some grey beads. Where did those greys come from? And be honest. Was it from the stress of this ummah? Was it the lack of deen? Or was it how am I going to establish myself in this world?
this world, my brothers. And that's why in the Quran, even, even, even in the Ahadith, Allah and His Prophet, they always shifted the focus of the Sahaba, always from dunya to where? Akhirah. Always. Allah says, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Have you chosen the life of this filth? Have you chosen the life of this temporary world? Have you chosen the life of this short time? While over there is everlasting and better? But who is there to listen? One of the companions after one of the battles of war, he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a big smile on his face. He says to him, Ya Rasulullah, no one has made more profit than me today. A dream that we all have, my brothers. You know, I don't have time, but wallahi... There is a silent competition in our community. Of course, we never mention it, trust me. <laughs> Wallah, even between me and my blood brother, there's a silent competition. Who has more? Whose is faster? Whose is prettier? Whose is whiter? Silent competition. Of course, we never talk about it. Astaghfirullah, brother Sheikh. No, you know, I'm not like that, you know. But it's killing us inside. So the Sahabi comes, he says to me, Ya Rasulullah, no one has made more than me on this day. And look at the honest genuineness of the Sahaba. So the Prophet of Allah, he says, no, someone made more money than you. So the Sahabi now, it's Rasulullah, so there's utmost adab. So the Sahabi says, and the Sahabi was making reference to what? After the battle, there was booty of war. So whenever the battle would finish, whatever was laying around from the soldiers, <coughs> anyone that you would have killed or captured, you take whatever they had. So what the Sahaba used to do, after you collected whatever you wanted, the Sahaba used to trade amongst them, like then, then, then and there, right? So they would trade. I wanted this, you got that, I'll give you this much, that much. So this companion, after all the trading was finished, he worked hard. After it all, he made the most. So he comes to the Prophet of Allah. He says to him, Ya Rasulullah, today no one has made more profit than me. Speaking about the business. So Rasulullah, he says, no, I know someone that made more than you. So the man says, Yani... <laughs> Now he's thinking, Ya Rasulullah, you were not there. I was there, man. I was in the market. <laughs> he's thinking, I know. I know what happened. I spoke to everyone. I know what everyone made. I know what, you know, where the shares were, where the stock market. I know what was happening. So he says to him, you know, with, again with Adab and with, he says to him, Ya Rasulullah, I've checked. I spoke to everyone. I made them. No one made more than me. He says to him, by Allah, I know someone that made more. So he says to him, Ya Rasulullah, I made X amount. He says, anyone that prays two raka'at, nafal, has earned more than the world and what it contains. <laughs> has earned more than the world and what it contains. His vision was always, this world had no value to him. When some, <coughs> when some jizya money 
tax. The first taxes that came to Medina came from where? Bahrain. Imagine the Sahaba who migrated from Mecca to Medina. Tough times, my brothers. The Sahaba went through tough times. Today, you and I, we say, Sheikh, things are tough. Really, Habibi, things are not tough. You have enough food in your pantry to feed your family for a month. Really, when you and I say tough times, what you and I really mean is, Sheikh, I'm not driving the car I want. And I don't live in the house that I want. That's what you and I mean by tough times. No, no, no. For them, for them, Ahl Sufa, the people that used to live in the back of the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahl Sufa, Abu Huraira says, he says, I seen the 70 people that lived in Ahl Sufa. He said, I seen some of them, such poverty, such extreme times. He said, I seen some of them who had nothing to cover themselves but an izar, the lower garment. Some of them, the izar was so short, it wasn't even enough to cover the aura. Imagine living in Masjid al Nabawi with Rasulullah, praying your namaz, and you don't have enough to cover your aura. And not once did the Prophet of Allah say to them, Shaykh, what's this? This is not deen. You should be living. You should be making money. We should be pros. No. And wallahi, even our mashayikh now. No, no, no. The problem with deen is we need to show the world that we can be rich and we can be this and we need to be the most advanced and we need and we need and we need. Why didn't Rasulullah say this to the people of Sufa? Why? So the first money that came to Medina came from Bahrain, jizya, tax. When the word came to Medina that jizya, tax is coming from Bahrain, the people that lived surrounding Medina, even the people of Quba, when they heard the money was coming, no one wanted to miss out. They've been waiting. They've served Rasulullah. They gave him everything, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now some money came in. So that Fajr, Sahih narration, that Fajr, all the people surrounding Medina, guess where they prayed Fajr? In Majid al Nabawi. <laughs> so the Prophet, he prays Fajr, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then as he stood up and he turned around to leave, Wallah, I'm not adding an inch of salt. Look at the narration. They all stood up in his way. <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't want to miss out. <clears throat> Sheikh, I'm here, just so you know. So they all stood in his way, sallallahu, all trying to gain his attention. So he smiled, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says to them, it seems to me like news came to you about the tax from Bahrain. So they said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. <laughs> Times are tough, man. <laughs> Give me something, bro. He says, by Allah, it's not poverty that I fear for you. Rather, it's that this world was to open its gates on you and you become consumed by wealth. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, every ummah had its fitna. And the, fit and the fitna of my ummah is wealth. When he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he grabbed Abdullah ibn Umar and he grabbed him by his shoulders and he says to Abdullah ibn Umar, he says, Kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharib aw abiru sabil. He says, young man, but wallahi we hear these ahadith. What's it got to do with me, bro? Young man, 
live in this world like a stranger, like a traveller, like a wayfarer. Honestly, my brothers, please, do you feel like a stranger? Go home and look at the palace that you've built. Does that look like someone who's living in this world as a traveller? He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ad-dunya sijn al-mu'min wa jannatu al-kafir. This world, my brothers, is the prison of the believer and it's the jannah of the disbeliever. We're killing ourselves over their jannah, my brothers. We've exhausted our lives over their jannah. We work so... Wallahi, my brothers, look, let's be real. You and I don't work as hard as we do because things are tough. We work as hard as we do because we're trying to maintain a particular standard of living that we've chosen. That's the truth. The truth is, we work like we do because we're trying to maintain a level of standard that we've chosen. Not Rasulullah, trust me, he didn't choose it. He didn't choose, nor did Allah choose it. We are trying to keep up with the Joneses. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. <coughs> never, never, ever, ever did he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, read the hadith, authentic narrations. He lived his whole life in this dunya. And never once did he fill up his stomach with even inferior dates. Look at the lives that we live. So there's always, there's always the smart brother that comes. There's, there's always the alim that tells me, listen brother, I'm not working. Sheikh, things are changing. And I'm working as hard as, because I want to establish my children. I, you know, I need a second home. I need to leave something behind. Today we can buy. Tomorrow, Allahu A'lam what comes. And, and it sounds like such a convincing argument, doesn't it? <laughs> Sheikh, it's not for me. Kasma, man, wallah, it's not for me, Sheikh. I'm happy with little, you know. But my children, what about my wife? Don't they have rights? What sort of a husband would I be, Sheikh? What sort of a husband would I be if I died and I left them with little? Convincing. But again, who's the measuring stick? Let's see. <laughs> Aisha says in the Sahih Hadith, she was saying to Urwa, her nephew, she says to him, Ya Urwa, by Allah, we used to see the moon, then the full moon, then the full moon, two complete months used to pass us by, and not a single flame not a single flame was lit in any of the nine houses of Rasulullah. No cooking and no boiling for two consecutive months in nine houses. So Urwa asked, he says to oh my auntie, how did you people live? She said to him, Al-Aswadan, Al-Tamru wal ma dates and water for two consecutive months. Now I want to ask you, and don't be quick to answer, watch out, don't be quick to answer, two months, two months, if the local imam didn't cook or boil anything for one week, 
good husband or bad husband? Be careful. Be careful, huh? Be careful. Good husband or bad husband? Go to any alim and tell him I haven't cooked in my house for a month. This is not deen. You've misunderstood. Allah does not ask this of us. For two months, Rasulullah, in any of the nine houses, no cooking and boiling for two months. Good husband or bad husband? What a dilemma. Uh, good husband. Lies! Lie, lie, lie! Every ounce of our society says he was the worst husband. When he died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he was dying. Come on, read the narrations. As he was dying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all he possessed was seven gold coins. Nine wives, seven gold coins. So on his last breath, Aisha walks in, radiallahu ta'ala anha, and he orders her, he says, so oh, Aisha, what is left in the house? She says, oh, Prophet of Allah, what's left? There's a bowl of barley, a bowl of barley, and seven gold coins. Sister Aisha, go outside and distribute the gold coins. We want to leave houses and empires. Sheikh, my children, man. My children. We exhaust our whole life. I exhaust all my health attaining wealth. And then when I get it, I end up spending it trying to restore my health. What an amazing concept, man. Allah did not send you to feed your children. Allah is the one that sustains, not you. Your job was not to work day and night while your son grows up on an iPad. So you can leave him a house. Because I swear by Allah, that house that you're going to leave them will be the very essence of your family's destruction when you die. Have we not seen it? Have we not seen inheritance destroy families? Oh, are you people here, awliya of Allah, yani? please tell me. Have you not seen inheritance destroy families? Good. But I know better than Rasulullah. Ah, relax, man. Sheikh, I spoke to my financial advisor. He graduated in the local university, man. Alhamdulillah, he's Muslim, he's good. Smart, man. We gave him some money within a year. Unbelievable returns. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he loses consciousness. And then he wakes up again. He says to her, Ya Aisha, what did you do with the money? Imagine, at the time she was 18 years old. You know and I know and she knew she can't get married after Rasulullah, can she? Who's going to look after her? So she says, Ya Rasulullah, I still have them. Seven gold, let it go, man. A couple of coins, Habibi, come on. Ghadiba Rasulullah. He says to Aisha, do you want me to die and stand in front of Allah while I still possess something from this world? Wow, man. <laughs> wow. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, one of the ijma' on his, they call him the fifth rightly guided Khalifa. 
Umar ibn Abd al he was very wealthy. He was the Amir. When he was dying, he was distributing his wealth, his land, as he was dying. And he gave everything to the point where his children, his sons, the, the man's leaving us nothing. <laughs> so they went to one of his closest advice, look at the adab. My dad's dying. He's, imagine, the, man, the man's the Amir. So one of his advisors, he comes to him, he says to me, Amir, you're leaving man and the way you're giving out your wealth, you've left nothing for your kids. Allahu Akbar, where, where, where? Where are these? He says, if my sons grow up to fear Allah like I taught them, then Allah will look after them. And if my fun, and if my kids grow up not to fear Allah, then why? Why? Why would I leave my money with a sinner? <laughs> Wallah, there's so much more I want to say. But it's getting late. Priorities, my brothers, priorities. Who is your real Rabb? Who is my real Lord? The Prophet says, Ta'isa Abd al-Dirham, Ta'isa Abd al-Dinar, destroyed and humiliated is the one that worships the Dinar. Destroyed and humiliated is the one that worships the Dirham. Have you ever seen anyone put a Dirham on the floor and make sajda? No. But who's the one that worships O Prophet of Allah? What is this hadith of yours, Ya Rasulullah? We've never, even in this, I've never seen anyone put a dollar on the floor and make sajda. So what do you mean destroyed? Humiliated is the one that worships the dirham. What do you mean, Ya Rasulullah? You know what it means to worship, my brothers? Who knows? To worship is to obey. The dollar tells me when to wake up and when to sleep. The dollar dictates to me which house I live in and what food I eat. The dollar dictates to me when we travel, where we travel and how long we travel for. When Allah, the one who we claim we worship, the one who we claim we love, when the Mu'addin says, As-salatu khayrun min al-nawm. Hayya ala as-salat. Hayya ala al-falah. Allah says, come to the prayer. Come to success. Where is the ummah at Fajr? At the time of Fajr, you can come to the masjid in reverse. The whole way from your house to the masjid in reverse. No one will even know. But then the same ummah that says Allah is a razzaq Allah is my Lord, Allah is the one that I obey. At Fajr. But then at 7 o'clock in the morning, peak hour traffic bumper to bumper because my real Rabb is calling me there. My real Rabb is calling me there. Do you have the effort of tabliq in this town? Yes? No? So you're familiar with jama'at, yes? In Australia, it's Lebanese dominated, Arab. And we Arabs, we don't want to do anything other than what we know. So this concept of jama'at is very new to us. What do you mean go, khuruj, jama'at? What's, what's, what, what do you mean leave your wife for a month, 40 days? What deen is this, bro? Four months. I remember the first time we heard four months, we wanted to take the man outside and give him a belting. What do you mean four months, bro? What deen is this, bro? Sheikh, what do you mean? Leave my wife. Leave the, uh, my, my, go with this. For Allah, what do you, what, what do you mean go in jama'at four months? 
You should see the wars we've had in Sydney. The battles. What do you mean? What is this bid'ah? And what is this? And who, what is this jama'ah? Where do these people come from? We've never heard this concept. Brother, how, 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 how? When it comes to Allah, how? But the same brother, when a business opportunity comes for him in Dubai for four years, if I told you now, come with me to Dubai for one year, and in return you'll have five million dollars American, would you come or not? But to spend four months in Jamaat, to purify this sick heart, to get closer to Allah, to earn my Jannah, Bid'a man. But Dubai for a whole year, leaving your. Wallahi, tell your wife you're going Jamaat, she'll come up with three and a half million excuses as to why you can't go, all for the sake of Allah. Your father will turn against you. Your mother will turn. Your in-laws, your in-laws. But let them hear that you passed on an opportunity where you could have earned five million dollars in a year. Wallahi, your father will slap you. Your mother will slap you. Your father-in-law will slap you. Man, are you crazy? Abd means to obey. Who do you really obey? Is it Allah? Or is it this one? You're tired, huh? I know you're tired. My brothers, we need to reevaluate our lives, man. This world that you've given so much to. You can give the world everything you have and wallahi it will take it and give you nothing in return. Why don't we believe our Prophet man? Why? Why does every one of us think he's going to outsmart the next man? You came into this world naked. And by Allah, you leave naked. You take nothing with you, man. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتُ ثَلَاثَةَ Three things they follow the dead man to the grave. أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَعَمَلُهُ فَيَرْجِعُ اثْنَيْنِ وَيَبْقَ وَاحِدْ يَرْجِعُ أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَيَبْقَ عَمَلُهُ the Prophet of Allah says three things, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Three things they follow the dead man to the grave. That's you, my brother. Please wake up. Pay attention. Pay attention. That's you. That's you. Very soon you will be dead. Very soon you will be dead. Every single night when you go to sleep, Allah takes away your soul. al nawm mawt al-azhar. wal mawt nawm al-akbar. Sleep is the minor death. And death is the big sleep. Wake up to yourselves. Every morning when you wake up, what's the authentic dua? Alhamdulillah alladhi what? Ahyana, the one that gave me life. Ba'dama, amatana, you were dead last night. Who gave you life? Why? To collect money? To exhaust your life? Where is Quran? Where is Deen? Where is da'wah? Where is dhakr? Where? Where? Busy, 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 busy. Until when? Until when, my brothers? Until when? When will you make time? When? Look at us. Our lives, wallahi, we've wasted our lives. Three things they follow. He says three things follow the dead man to the grave. His wealth, his family, and his deeds.
فَيَرْجِعُ اثْنَيْنِ He says two of them, they come back. They take it to the grave, but then they come back. Your wealth and your family, they come back. And in most cases, they start to argue. Wallahi, Kasma, he promised me this. And Kasma, he promised me that. Wallahi, he told me this as he was dying. Wallahi, I wasn't there. Brothers go to war. Families stop speaking to each other. Uh, mother takes sides with Sir Al-Khab. But this, Wallahi, this is your ending, whether you like it or not. Everyone like, no, 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 brother, not me. You know, Habibi, please, wake up. What are you left with? Your a'mal. One of the names of the day of judgment, my brothers, is the day of what? The day of regret. <sighs> then and then and only then will you know الهاكم التكاثر الهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر on the day of judgment my brothers when it's too late then you will know the value of one subhanallah then you will know the value of one day i could have fasted but i didn't fast then you will know, that then, but then, Habibi, then it's too late, Ya Albi, it's too late. My job and your job is to establish deen, my brothers, not to collect wealth. Stop wasting your life. Come back to Allah. I want to ask you something. If you were to serve Allah and His Prophet, do you think Allah will reward you by taking away your dunya? Now we've been trained to say, no, Shaykh, a'udhu billah. But every ounce of our action says what? Shaykh, let me pay off my house, and then as soon as I paid off my house, I'm all for you, man. I'll go in jama'ah one month, 40 months, 10 days, 10 years, whatever, just let me pay off the house. Let me establish myself. Is that how we speak or not? Anything and anyone that you love more or equal to Allah, fee more or equal to Allah, have a sense of security equal or more than Allah. Anything and anyone that you love, that you fear, that you have a sense of security or a sense of protection or a sense of income or a sense of honor or a sense of pride, Wallahi, Allah will destroy you and humiliate you with that very thing that you love. By Allah. Anything you put over Allah, Allah will humiliate you with it. How many people have given their lives to the satisfaction of their wives and their wives have humiliated them in this dunya? How many people have exhausted their lives for the satisfaction of his son so his son can wear the best clothes and his son can drive the best car and his son can look the best. How many people have given to their sons and their sons ended up being the very reason and the means of their destruction and humiliation. Whenever you put anything or anyone in front of Allah, Allah will humiliate you and destroy you through it. So make your choices wisely. نسأل الله عز وجل أن يغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء والأموات. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to give us the proper understanding of this deen and to take the love of this filthy world out of our hearts and the love of the akhirah. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب.